Quick note before the video starts. I'm now offering to make one video each month based on a viewer's idea. Just support me on TP and leave your topic suggestion in the comments there. Link in the description. The chosen idea will come from the top supporter or the one that best fits the channel. You can join in anytime, and your support helps me upgrade my gear and work on a big speculative evolution project. Thanks a ton! millennium before our era, agriculture spread across the Fertile Crescent and into parts of Europe and Asia. Farming and animal domestication became more advanced, leading to the growth of larger, more permanent settlements like Jericho. These early communities developed new tools, pottery, and early forms of social organization. As humans reshaped landscapes through farming and deforestation, ecological pressures intensified, contributing to ongoing Holocene extinctions. This period marked a turning point where humanity's control over nature deepened and the foundations of civilization were firmly planted. The South American pointed antlered deer was a large deer species from South America, particularly Argentina and Uruguay. It belonged to the genus Antifer and resembled a robust red deer with heavy branched antlers adapted for display or combat. Its biology suggests it inhabited open woodlands and grasslands, feeding on tough vegetation. The species likely went extinct around the end of the Pleistocene, probably due to a combination of climate change and human hunting pressure. The North American Pampatherae was a large species of Pampatherae, an armadillo-like xenarthran that lived in North and Central America. It was closely related to modern armadillos, though much larger, measuring up to two meters in length and covered in heavy, segmented armor. Unlike true armadillos, Homsina had robust limbs and likely moved more slowly, grazing on coarse vegetation like grasses and low shrubs. Its teeth and jaw structure indicate it was an herbivore adapted to open, dry habitats such as savannas. It disappeared around 10,000 years ago, probably due to a mix of climatic shifts at the end of the Ice Age and pressure from newly arrived human populations. Its extinction is part of the broader Pleistocene megafaunal collapse in the Americas. Cuvier's small ground sloth was a medium-sized ground sloth that lived in South America. It belonged to the family Melodontidae, a group of heavily built sloths with relatively short limbs and a strong, sturdy body adapted for digging and slow movement. Unlike modern tree-dwelling sloths, it was entirely terrestrial and likely fed on tough, fibrous plants, using its strong forelimbs and claws to pull vegetation or dig. It may have had some dermal ossicles, small bony plates in the skin, as natural armor, the species likely went extinct around 10,000 years ago due to a combination of rapid climatic changes at the end of the Ice Age and increasing pressure from human hunting. The woolly rhinoceros was one of the most iconic megafaunal mammals of the Ice Age, adapted to the cold, dry steppes of Eurasia. This massive herbivore, weighing up to over 2,000 kilograms, had a stocky body covered in thick, reddish-brown fur short ears, and a large hump on its shoulders formed by fat and muscle, an adaptation for surviving glacial climates. Its most distinctive feature was its two horns, the front one sometimes exceeding one meter in length, likely used in defense, display, and for sweeping snow away to reach low vegetation. 
Fossil remains, including mummified carcasses found in Siberian permafrost, have revealed remarkable preservation of skin, fur, and even stomach contents, showing a diet rich in grasses, sedges, and shrubs. They coexisted with early humans, and cave paintings depict them with striking accuracy, proving they were observed and possibly hunted. However, archaeological evidence suggests that humans played a lesser role in their extinction compared to other Ice Age species as few kill sites or butchery marks have been found. Their decline began around 14,000 years ago, intensifying as the climate became warmer and wetter. These changes led to the collapse of the dry grassland habitats they depended on, replaced by forests and marshy tundra. Interestingly, genetic studies show that woolly rhinos maintained strong populations up until shortly before extinction, with no evidence of inbreeding or population collapse, suggesting a sudden environmental tipping point rather than a slow decline. Additionally, the extinction of the woolly mammoth, a key ecosystem engineer that helped maintain open grasslands by trampling vegetation, may have indirectly harmed the woolly rhino by accelerating habitat loss. The Pan American ground sloth was one of the largest ground sloths to have ever lived, standing up to six meters tall on its hind limbs and weighing over 3,000 kilograms. Its massive claws and strong limbs suggest it was a slow-moving herbivore that fed on leaves, twigs, and possibly fruits from trees or tall shrubs. Fossil sites, including trackways in Central America and skulls in Brazil and the southern United States, indicate it shared its habitat with early humans. While human hunting may have contributed to its decline, the primary drivers of its extinction around 9,000 years ago were likely climate change and ecosystem shifts following the end of the Ice Age. Like many other megafauna, it could not adapt quickly enough to the warmer, more variable Holocene environment and increasing human presence. Smilodon fatalis was a large saber-toothed cat. It belonged to the subfamily Macerodontinae, distinct from modern big cats, and is known for its iconic elongated upper canine teeth, which could reach over 18 centimeters in length. It weighed between 160 and 280 kilograms and had a robust muscular build with short limbs, suggesting it was built for ambush rather than speed. Unlike lions or tigers, it likely hunted large, slow-moving prey using powerful forelimbs to subdue them before delivering a precise killing bite. Thousands of fossils have been recovered from the La Brea tar pits in California, revealing insights into its ecology, including injuries consistent with social behavior and possible cooperative hunting. Its coexistence with early humans and other large predators like dire wolves and American lions indicates intense competition for prey. While humans may have hunted the same animals, there's little evidence of direct conflict between this species and humans. The extinction of its megafaunal prey during the terminal Pleistocene, driven by climate change and human activity, likely led to its decline. The Asian ostrich was a large species of ostrich that lived across parts of Central and South Asia during the Pleistocene epoch. It belonged to the genus Struthio, like the modern African ostrich, but was generally larger and more robust, with some estimates suggesting it stood over three meters tall. Fossil eggshells and bones found in Southern Asia indicate it inhabited open arid environments such as grasslands and semi-deserts. Genetic analyses of fossilized eggshell DNA suggest a close relationship to modern ostriches, implying a common African ancestor that dispersed into Asia. It likely went extinct in the late Pleistocene, possibly due to climate shifts, habitat loss, and pressures from expanding human populations. Sebolbionyx oviteps was a large ground sloth species from Mexico, particularly the Yucatan Peninsula. Belonging to the family Megalonychidae, it was part of a lineage more commonly found in South America and the Caribbean, making its presence in southern Mexico especially significant. This sloth was robust and fully terrestrial, with strong forelimbs and large claws likely used for foraging and defense. 
fossils recovered from flooded cave systems show exceptional preservation, offering rare insight into its anatomy and paleoenvironment. Based on its dentition, it was an herbivore feeding on a mix of leaves and possibly fruits in tropical forested environments. It likely went extinct around 9,000 years ago during the early Holocene due to a combination of climatic warming and human expansion into the region, consistent with patterns seen in other megafaunal extinctions across the Americas. The Asian straight-tusked elephant was a giant elephant that roamed the Indian subcontinent and parts of Southeast Asia during. Classified within the genus Paleoloxodon, it is distinct from its European relative Paleoloxodon antiquus by its slenderer limb bones, a stout cranium, and a unique infraorbital depression behind the eye socket. Sexual dimorphism was pronounced. A male specimen with a 1.6 meters femur suggests a shoulder height of about over 4 meters and a body mass near 13 tons, making it possibly one of the largest land mammal ever. Its massive parieto-occipital crest on the skull anchored powerful neck muscles, supporting its heavy head and enormous tusks. One partial tusk alone was estimated at 3.60 meters long and over 120 kilograms in weight when complete. Although it overlapped in time with early modern humans, direct evidence of hunting or butchery marks is currently lacking, implying that human predation was not the sole driver of its demise. Instead, its extinction corresponds to rapid climatic shifts at the end of the Pleistocene that transformed grasslands into more wooded or marshy environments, reducing its preferred habitat. The decline of co-occurring megafauna, including the steppe mammoth, which helped maintain open landscapes, may have compounded these environmental stresses by accelerating forest encroachment. As temperatures warmed and monsoon patterns intensified, this elephant population's fragmented and vanished, marking one of the most dramatic Probochidian losses in Earth's recent geological history. The South American saber-tooth was the largest and most robust species of the saber-toothed cats. It belonged to the genus Smilodon, within the extinct subfamily Machirodontini, and differed from Smilodon fatalis, its North American relative, by being significantly heavier, with some individuals estimated to exceed 400 kilograms and possess a more powerfully built forelimb structure. Like its relatives, it had massive upper canines reaching over 28 centimeters in length, used to deliver fatal bites to the throat or belly of large prey. Its skeletal morphology, including short limbs and a broad chest, indicates that it was built for ambush hunting, relying on stealth and strength rather than speed. Its fossils are often found in association with extinct megafauna-like horses, indicating its role as a top predator in South American savannas and woodlands. Evidence suggests Mus it had powerful forelimbs to grapple with prey, and some healed injuries on fossils hint at possible social behavior or intraspecific competition. It arrived in South America during the Great American Biotic Interchange, having evolved in North America and later expanding its range. Its extinction around 9,000 years ago is attributed to the combined effects of climatic shifts at the end of the Ice Age and the disappearance of large herbivorous prey. While humans may have contributed through competition and habitat alteration, there is little direct evidence of widespread human hunting of Smilodon populator. Its extinction marks the end of one of Earth's most specialized and iconic predator lineages. The American camel was a large camel species that lived in Western North America from around 2 million to 9,000 years ago. Unlike modern camels, it lacked humps but was anatomically similar in size and shape, standing about 2.3 meters tall at the shoulder and weighing up to 900 kilograms. Fossil remains have been found from Canada to Mexico, particularly in open woodlands and grassland regions, indicating it was well adapted to dry, temperate environments. Dental and isotopic evidence suggest it was a mixed feeder, grazing on grasses and browsing shrubs. It coexisted with early human populations, and some archaeological sites show potential signs of butchery, implying occasional hunting. 
its extinction likely resulted from a combination of climate change reducing suitable habitat and human hunting pressure consistent with patterns seen in other American megafauna. The Scots horse is an extinct species that lived in North America, particularly in the southwestern United States and Mexico. It belonged to the genus Equus, and it is considered one of the more advanced true horses with a single toe and high crown teeth adapted for grazing. It stood approximately 1.5 meters at the shoulder and had a robust build, well suited for life in open grasslands and semi-arid environments. It was part of a diverse equid fauna that evolved in North America before the genus Equus dispersed to the Old World. Equus scotti coexisted with early Paleo-Indian cultures, and some kill sites indicate it was hunted by humans using spear points. Despite its success during the Ice Age, it went extinct approximately 9,000 years ago, likely due to a combination of rapid climate warming and human hunting, which disrupted its ecological niche. Celidodon was a medium to large-sized extinct ground sloth from the family Melodontidae. It had a heavily built body, strong forelimbs with large claws, and was likely a slow-moving herbivore that fed on tough vegetation, including shrubs and coarse grasses. Fossil remains have been found in Chile, Argentina, and Uruguay, indicating it inhabited open grasslands and lightly forested areas. It likely went extinct around 9,000 years ago. The Colombian mammoth was one of the largest elephant species to have lived, roaming much of North America during the Pleistocene epoch. It belonged to the genus Mammuthus and is closely related to the woolly mammoth, though it was adapted to more temperate climates and did not possess the same dense fur. Adults could reach up to 4 meters at the shoulder and weigh over 10 tons, with long, spiraled tusks that sometimes exceeded 4 meters in length. They were primarily grazers, feeding on grasses, sedges, and other vegetation found in open woodlands and grasslands, as confirmed by fossilized dung and isotopic studies. Numerous fossil finds suggest they coexisted with early Paleo-Indian cultures, such as the Clovis people, who likely hunted them using spears. Despite their size and strength, the Colombian mammoth was vulnerable to environmental changes during the terminal Pleistocene. As the Ice Age ended, warming climates transformed their grassland habitats into forests or deserts, reducing available forage. This environmental stress, combined with increased predation by expanding human populations, likely led to their extinction around 9,000 years ago. Unlike the woolly mammoth, which persisted in isolated Arctic refugia, the Colombian mammoth completely disappeared, marking a major loss in North American megafaunal diversity. Greater Cuban Nesophontes was a species of small insectivorous mammal endemic to Cuba, belonging to the family Nesophontidae, which was unique to the Caribbean. It likely resembled a shrew with an elongated snout and sharp teeth adapted for feeding on insects and other small invertebrates in forested environments. Fossil evidence suggests it disappeared around 9,000 years ago, likely due to climatic changes at the end of the Pleistocene and possibly the arrival of the first humans in the Caribbean. Cuban Porac was intermediate in size between its two known congeners. Storrs Olson considered that the cave deposits of the Porac and other contemporary fauna were the prey of barn owls and were of Holocene age. Because of the cryptic nature of Porox and other nightjars, he considered it possible that the species might not be extinct, though there have been no confirmed records of living birds. The giant ghost-faced bat was a large bat species endemic to Cuba. Closely related to the extant ghost-faced bats, it is thought to have shared similar insectivorous habits, but was notably larger, suggesting potential